What's going on? Welcome to the very first ever world famous secret gear shootout video. So in this video, we're going to be comparing four microphones that I had laying around. Those microphones being the Blue Yeti, Blue Yeti Pro, AT2020 USB Plus, and Mojave MA200. Now I usually use the MA200 for recording my videos, and as a matter of fact, that's what I'm using right now. But yeah, let's get into the audio comparisons. I've made sure to do all of them as similarly as possible. And of course, no effects added except for some gain to make sure the clips are all the same level but with the accessories that you will probably end up using should you choose to get that microphone. I.e. the price of the microphone loosely correlates to the price of the accessories. For instance, for the Yetis, they'd be using their built-in stand. And I'll be sure to mention whatever accessories I'm using. So let's get started. Alright, so here we are with the Blue Yeti. As I mentioned before, it will be on its own stand. My head is about 4 to 5 inches away, and it's using a sock-type pop filter. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickle peppers, a peck of pickle peppers, Peter Piper picked. If Peter Piper picked a peck of pickle peppers, where's the peck of pickle peppers Peter Piper picked? And now my head is about two inches away from the microphone so that you can see what kind of proximity effect it has. Of course, as always, everything will be level matched. Alright, so here we are with the Blue Yeti Pro. As I mentioned before, it will be on its own stand. My head is about four to five inches away, and it's using a sock type pop filter. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickle peppers, a peck of pickle peppers Peter Piper picked. If Peter Piper picked a peck of pickle peppers, where's the peck of pickle peppers Peter Piper picked? And now my head is about two inches away from the microphone so that you can see what proximity effect it has. Of course, as always, everything will be level matched. All right, so here we are with the AT2020 USB Plus. It's on a small desktop stand. My head is about four to five inches away, and it's using a gooseneck type nylon pop filter. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickle peppers. A peck of pickle peppers Peter Piper picked. If Peter Piper picked a peck of pickle peppers, where's the peck of pickle peppers Peter Piper picked? And now my head is about two inches away from the microphone so that you can see what kind of proximity effect it has. And as always, everything will be level matched. All right. So here we are with the Mojave Audio MA200. It's on a boom stand with a counterweight. My head is about four to five inches away, and it's using a gooseneck type screen pop filter. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickle peppers, a peck of pickle peppers Peter Piper picked. If Peter Piper picked a peck of pickle peppers, where's the peck of pickle peppers Peter Piper picked? And now my head is about two inches away from the microphone so that you can see what kind of proximity effect it has. And as always, everything will be level matched. Wow. If this isn't a case of you get what you pay for, I don't know what is. I mean, you could also point out that I'm comparing an XLR mic, which is worth over $1,000, to three USB mics that are all less than 200 For those of you who aren't aware, a USB mic plugs directly into the computer via USB. It acts as its own audio interface, converting the analog sound waves to digital data all by itself. But honestly, I don't believe that the preamps in my audio interface really make that much of a difference, and we can safely say that it's the mic standing on its own. But here, here's a comparison between the AT2020 USB and XLR version. This is the AT2020 XLR. How does it sound? This is the AT2020 USB. How does it sound? Okay, I will concede that the 2020 USB is a bit more noisy, but there's no huge tonal difference. Also, that's the original USB, not the Plus. Pretty sure they fixed that issue in the Plus. So I guess you could say if you need absolutely as little noise as possible, then get an XLR. Otherwise, you could get a USB to save money and just record up close. Now, usually whenever someone does a mic shootout video, it kind of bugs me when they don't really say the same things right next to each other through the different mics. If that makes any sense. Basically, here's all the Peter Piper parts. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickle peppers, a peck of pickle peppers Peter Piper picked. If Peter Piper picked a peck of pickle peppers, where's the peck of pickle peppers Peter Piper picked? Peter Piper picked a peck of pickle peppers, a peck of pickle peppers Peter Piper picked. If Peter Piper picked a peck of pickle peppers, where's the peck of pickle peppers Peter Piper picked? Peter Piper picked a peck of pickle peppers, a peck of pickle peppers Peter Piper picked. If Peter Piper picked a peck of pickle peppers, where's the peck of pickle peppers Peter Piper picked? Peter Piper picked a peck of pickle peppers, a peck of pickle peppers Peter Piper picked. If Peter Piper picked a peck of pickle peppers, where's the peck of pickle peppers Peter Piper picked? Well, when you put it that way, the difference is pretty easy to notice. So here's my thoughts on the four microphones. The Yeti and the Yeti Pro sound pretty similar. Go figure. 
I've come to think of the Yeti and the Yeti Pro as fraternal twins and one of them just happens to be more talented than the other. Yes, you should all know by now that the Yeti Pro has a 192 kilohertz sample rate, making it amazing for field recording, and it has a stereo XLR output, which I did not use. But honestly, the two really sound very much alike. Both of them have that kind of same dull tone that comes with that scoop out in the high mids, which you can see on the frequency response, it's kind of scooped out between 1K and 3K. The 2020 does not have that scoop out, so it sounds a lot more crisp, but overall it's very clear which microphone is the winner. Congratulations to my Mojave Audio MA200. <laughs> Now, but each mic can be used in its own way. I think the Yetis do pretty well for streaming, and the Yeti Pro does pretty good for field recording. Remember, you can record in stereo with the Yetis. You can't do that with the other mics. And I don't want you to jump to any assumptions like, just because the Yeti is not as crisp and clean, it's not as good of a microphone. It's really all in how you use it. Like, my voice has kind of a peak in the upper mids, so using the Yeti helps kind of tone that down. Or Yeti Pro, of course. If you have a real thin, nasally voice, then you can get the Yeti and use it up close, and it wouldn't sound terrible. The AT2020 can be well suited for more professional sounding narrations. It's a huge favorite with YouTubers and podcasters, but overall, especially when listening back through my Reference 4 plugin, it's very clear that the MA200 just delivers a way more even and balanced tone. Like, you can definitely hear the overtones in the Yetis, and kind of even in the 2020. And this is in a room where the walls are covered with acoustic panels, by the way. I don't know what I was expecting. I also noticed that when I got up close to this pop filter, like, I started to get this really, really whispery, airy sound. It's this kind of whizzy sound, actually. Yeah, that's also just a bit wonky. Ignore it. But yeah, that was the shootout video. Hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to subscribe, and sayonara. Also, the links to all the microphones will be in the description, but don't buy them on Amazon. Buy them on Reverb.